Hello, Youpers. April 20th, 2016. Also known as 420. Now, this is the second day of what's called Sacrifice of Blood to the Beast. The Blood Sacrifice to the Beast at the 13-day period. Runs from April 19th to May 1st. And, uh... As we did in our radio show this week, uh, many, many events have happened in history during this time period. I remember May 1 uh, as a young man with the Soviet Union, now Russia, but was the Soviet Union. On May Day, May 1st, the giant parade that they would have in Moscow, and the ICBMs, Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, how they would parade those out in front of the public to show their might. So, mm -mm. anyway, today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm, I'm just going to read some scripture here today and, and just kind of let the Lord move in me and, and I pray that uh, what is for you uh, will go into your spirit. What is not for you will fall to the ground and that each one will receive what they should receive. Um, I'm going to read out of my favorite book, which is James. Of course, it's a little fight between James and Ephesians, but James usually wins out. And, boy, I wish I could do the whole book, but there's probably not enough time because I'll probably get stopped on a verse here and a verse there, and I'll elaborate. So, start off James 1.1. Uh, this is James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings, he said. This is to the Jewish people. Of course, we're grafted in, born again, we are grafted in. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. You know... When you're going through temptations and persecution, it does work patience in your life. And then each time you go through it, you, you tolerate it a little bit more and a little bit more until finally one day, years down the road, you're able to handle something very easily with much patience. People look at you and wonder, well, hey, how can you do that? They have no idea the path you've walked that allows you to do that. So thank the Lord that uh, he does work that out to his glory. Verse 4, But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. See, when when uh, you do have patience, uh, and it does its work in your life, perfect, you're perfect. Now it says there is no perfect one, no not one, but you can get pretty close. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. You know, I had four children, I raised a couple others, um, and I can't tell you how many times I, I went to the Lord and it was like, Lord, I, I don't know what to do here, you know. You said if anybody lacks wisdom, let him ask. I'm lacking wisdom, I'm asking so you said you'd give it to me, and folks, I don't have enough time to tell you how many times I woke up the next day, or even just within the hour, the answer would just pop into my head. It was a time when I got to learn his voice, because these are answers in, uh, that I could not have thought of. I, mean, I couldn't have thought of these scenarios. They, they definitely were divine. So, if you're lacking in wisdom in an area in your life, just ask him and it shall be given to you. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. So you, you've got to have faith. Now, if if you do waver, if your faith's not strong, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word, that means you're not spending enough time in the Bible. So get yourself in the Bible to get that faith built up so that when you ask for wisdom, it's going to be given to you. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not the man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So, folks, don't be asking and then, you know, Oh, Lord, I know that uh, 
you're all powerful and great and that you protect those you love and then the next time something comes along you you just you freak out because uh, you're caught in the storm so try not to waver we'll move on to the next area it says let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted but the rich in that he be made low because as followers because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away you know that's the one thing Solomon realized that it didn't matter that he was the wisest and the richest when he looked around and he saw these young servants 50 years younger than him he knew they would outlive him and so what really mattered you know life is but a vapor For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof faileth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also let the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation when he is tried. He shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. So folks there's a great reward for us and and what do we have just this vapor of a life uh, any of you that are of any age realize how quick time starts flowing eventually and just brother it moves along pretty fast pretty fast let no man say when he is tempted I am tempted of God for God cannot be tempted with evil neither tempteth he any man but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So it starts off as a little seed with your own lust. Resist the devil and he will flee. Stop it right there. Cast down vain imaginations. You know in your spirit when you're thinking something wrong. Don't feed into that thing. I don't care if it's sex greed uh, whatever it is don't feed into it folks because it will grow and it'll bring forth sin and when it's finished sin will bring forth death you know sin is fun for a season no doubt about it but then the trap is sprung do not err my beloved brethren that's where James went right after that do not err Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begot he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. We're a first fruits, folks. We're going to be resurrected as Christ was as it says in John we don't know what we'll be like but we know that when we see him we will be like him and we know that he was able to eat and drink with the disciples even though he had wounds in his hands and his feet and his side you know the eternal person becomes an immortal being when the glorified body is joined with the spirit it's a great great mystery folks Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Folks, your spirits are already saved. But have you ever noticed in the scripture where he talks about saving the soul? Right? He's talking to Christians whose spirit is saved. You know, and I'm not going to get into the whole once saved, always saved. And I maybe I understand where they're getting that from. Because maybe the spirit is once saved, always saved. But he goes on to say, save your soul. Wouldn't that be horrible to you that your spirit go to heaven, but your soul not make it there? Now, I'm not sure how that's divided up, but I'm pretty sure the soul is the part of your body that is your mind. The part that is who you are. 
Get in the word, folks. Just follow the word. This is no time to think you know it all. This is no time to think, oh, well, just because uh, Brother Susie can do this, I ought to be able to do it. No, each person has to work out their own salvation. Fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Well, and, and James goes on to say that here. He says, uh, If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religious is vain. Shut that mouth, folks. Quit running. Quit flapping that <laughs> that evil, evil poison tongue. Be slow to speak. Think think about what you're gonna say. Try to take a moment and, and realize are you just gonna satisfy your own lust and get that out there so you can hurt somebody else and show that you're just a little quicker than they are, a little sharper than they are, that your sharp tongue can cut them and hurt them. Be careful. Be careful, folks. Because this that man's religion is in vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. You want to know what you're supposed to be doing, what pure religion is? Here it is. To visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. That's chapter one. Well, I've got about three minutes left. Let's see if we can get into part of chapter two here. Um, for if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, you know, off the street, maybe it rained on him, he hasn't showered in a couple weeks or longer, and I mean, his raiment is vile. Vile, his clothing is vile. But this other guy, man, he smells like uh, Halston 14, and uh, he's wearing some Gucci, and he's got a nice big Rolex on his hand. Which one do you walk up to and shake their hand in church on Sunday morning? Mm -hmm. And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, but you say to the poor, uh, Stand over there, or sit here under my footstool. And ye not then, are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom that he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before judgment seats? Do they not blaspheme the worthy name by which ye are called? If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself and you will do well Lord have mercy on us Father and grace Lord let us strive to get in we know these days are short we just ask for your wisdom Father especially in the areas of these last days where deception runneth wild we know over 20 times in the scriptures in the New Testament alone you said be not deceived so we know deception is out there so Father God be with us be with those who are, are hearing my voice and who will hear my voice and Father we give you the name the praise in Jesus name Amen